Over the years, I've tackled many kit bashes for the Astra Militarum. The uncountable worlds that make up the Imperium are home to an almost infinite amount of cultures, histories, and environments, all of which will shape the inhabitants and, in turn, their military forces. For kit bashes and converters, this provides ample room for creativity. However, sometimes acting on that inspiration can be tricky when getting a hold of interesting bits for your own regiments proves too difficult or expensive, which is why in the past I've looked towards the third party market, and in this video I'll be doing that once again, specifically with the new range of Desert Raiders from Cromlech. With the recent release of these new miniatures, Cromlech got in touch and asked me to take a look at the new range and see what I could do with them. And here's what they sent me, a variety of full kits and individual bits for me to sink my teeth into. As you can probably tell, the range has a strong Talon inspiration, and so would make for an excellent alternative range of miniatures, considering Games Workshop no longer sells their own. But let's face it, you probably didn't click on this video to just watch me build some kits as they're intended, so I did a little kit bashing. But first, as these components are all resin, it's generally best practice to give them a quick wash first. A soak in some warm soapy water and a scrub with an old toothbrush will help to remove any remaining release agents from the surface. This can interfere with gluing and painting, so it's best to get rid of it. After cleaning the parts were allowed to dry, and I was able to work on my five custom Astra Militarum regiments. My first creation was a member of Nephraxis VII. Regiments raised on Nephraxis are known as Firebreak Regiments, and their role in recent decades has been to slow down the approach of Tyranid incursions. This is achieved by virus bombing worlds that lie within the High Fleet's estimated path in an attempt to eliminate a source of biomass. The infantry of Nephraxis are then deployed to mop up anything that survived within the deep hives and bunkers of the planet. This grim task has resulted in a dour and clinically minded breed of soldier who thinks nothing of eliminating the citizens of the Imperium if it means saving more important worlds. In building a regiment intended to operate within the highly dangerous environments, I imagine a regiment equipped with completely sealed suits. As such, the void-proof suits of naval breaches seem like an excellent option. To allow for a wider choice of arms though, I did have to remove the small protruding shoulder pads. The bulk was clipped away before the shoulders were so flat with my knife. With the shoulders removed, the torso and legs were glued together. Now that the shoulders were flattened, I could attach some of the Cromlech rifle arms. The breeches only come with shotguns, so if you're looking to create a regular guardsman, you're going to need something a little more long-ranged. The Cromlech arms are perfect for this, as you can just buy them separately. As the arms are resin, I use some super glue for the step. While the stock backpack from the breeches kit would have worked well for the hazmat suit I was looking to create, I instead opted for the larger resin pack instead. Using the regular breecher head wouldn't have left the model distinct enough, so I opted for one of the Desert Raider heads. The fully enclosed mask and rebreather wasn't just relevant to a sandy environment, but also a toxic one. The model was then finished off by gluing a few pieces of equipment from the breeches kit. The Thornbark Rangers is a colloquial name given to the planetary defense forces of Rensilian's Fall. Covered in a dense, rapidly growing forest, the planet is home to an extensive logging industry. While wood is seldom used in construction across the wider Imperium, it is still employed to produce luxury goods such as furniture, decoration, and ornate weaponry. While the planet rarely sees outside incursions, the Thornback Rangers are never idle, constantly put to use against the dangerous fauna that reside within the deep forest. The Rangers have become expert hunters. The basis of this model was the Desert Raider's torso. I found that the long coat would work well for representing forest hunters. For the arms though, I instead opted for some Cadian shock troop arms holding a last gun. After a quick comparison against the new torso, I could see that the arms mostly fitted, but a few trims would help things to line up more accurately. So the trimming focused on the torso's shoulders and involved slightly shaving them back to reduce the torso's width. Frequent comparisons were made during this process until I was happy with how everything was lining up. 
Gluing the arms would be tricky though. Super glue tends to act fast and doesn't allow for much maneuvering. To help me out a bit here, I first used plastic glue to attach the right and left arms so they'd be locked into their final position. After giving this a chance to dry, the arms were super glued to the torso. To finish off the Ranger, a hooded head taken from the aptly named Wild Rangers kit was attached to the torso. Here it blended in nicely with the cloth around the shoulders, completing the miniature. House Vortigern is a proud and ancient knight household, hailing from the war-torn world of Zephyrus Prime. But beneath the towering knights are the Vortigern men-at-arms, who follow their masters into battle. While the war machines smash through the enemy's ranks and chase glorious victory, it is down to the lowly foot soldiers to mop up any remnants and secure territory. The basis of the men-at-arms were the RBT's Exaction Squad. Their armor, while still having elements of technology, was more archaic in their appearance, making them the perfect counterpart to the Knight Titans that these troops serve. Following the instructions, the torso and legs were glued together. Like with the breaches, the RBTs come equipped with shotguns rather than the standard issue last gun. I could have used the same rifle arms that I employed on the Nefraxis 7th, but instead I decided to use some of the Desert Raider pistol and sword arms to create a sergeant. For the head, the regular RBT Sellet style helms would have worked well for the medieval appearance I was trying to emulate, but to help distance the mini a little from its origins, I instead opted for a regular human head found in the Cadian Shock Troops kit. The RBT's kit comes with some holstered pistols, but as this man-at-arms already has his drawn, this needed to be modified. I clipped away and trimmed the handle before gluing it to the leg. To give the model that extra knightly vibe, I took an intercessor tilt shield. This would be placed over the left shoulder pad, but to help it fit, the back of the shield was shaved flat as well as the shoulder pad itself. With the two parts sitting comfortably against each other, the shield was super glued into place. Finally, the RBT's pouches were glued, but not before clipping down the truncheon so that it appeared more like a grenade. The Harbingers of Fate stand apart from the myriad of Chaos cults that infest the Imperium. They do not fight for power, revenge, or even for their own enjoyment. Instead, they hold the belief that humanity has stagnated, and so must fall in order for it to be reborn anew. The Harbingers see Chaos as a catalyst for this Phoenix-like resurrection, and so do what they can to help further its goals. Interestingly, a few Inquisitors with more extreme beliefs have expressed similar ideas regarding the Emperor himself. Whether or not this lends credence to those ideas is yet to be seen. The basis for this Harbinger was the Desert Raider torso once more, but instead of attaching Cadian arms to it, I instead opted for a more chaotic looking pair taken from the Blooded. As the torso comes pre-equipped with pouches, it did mean that the right arm holding the rifle intersected with some. So, using my knife, I trimmed back the pouches a little in order to make room. With both arms fitting properly, I could glue them both with superglue. When selecting a head, I went for the classic horned helmet taken from the Warriors of Chaos kit. While the torso and head both used a ball and socket joint, the neck on the head was a little too long. To fix this, I clipped down the length before shaving back that rounded end. The head was then attached to the torso. Finally, to feed into that Prophet of Doom aspect, I sourced a few pieces from the Free Guild Flagellant set. The board with the paper nailed to it was super glued to the back, along with a small hammer. To fill in the negative space between the board and the trooper's back, a scroll, also from the Flagellant box, would be added. But first, to allow it to better fit, the skull was removed, allowing the scroll to slot in nicely. The final build for this video isn't technically a custom regiment. Instead, it's my interpretation of what the Fremen from Dune would look like within the 40k universe. Both settings have similarities, so it's pretty straightforward to match those styles. The basis of this build came from the Necromunda Van Saar kit. Their high-tech body gloves are incredibly similar to the still suits employed by the Fremen especially those in the newer films. As such, all that they needed was a more appropriate head, which would be found among the Desert Raiders bits. However, to get this resin head to work with the plastic torsos, 
The Van Saar neck needed to be clipped down quite heavily, as did the ball joint on the head. It can be quite tricky, but making frequent comparisons helped to get these lining up. Once I was happy with the fit, the torso was assembled and the resin head was superglued atop the neck. All I was left to do now was to assemble the arms, using those from the Van Saar kit, which completed the miniature and my five custom regiments. But before we wrap up, Cromlech have also released some resin vehicles alongside their Desert Raiders, such as this Tartarus artillery tank. One thing you may notice as I build this model is that it's not equipped with regular tracks or wheels. Its method of locomotion is instead some giant walking legs. It's an incredibly detailed kit and would work exceptionally well alongside your Desert Raider forces, or if you wanted to use it with other regiments, you could tackle it in a more temperate colour scheme like I have done here. You can find this Tartarus along with three other variants and all the Desert Raiders kits I've used in this video over on the Bits of War website, which I'll include some links to down below. And so with that, let's take a look at those regiments one final time. And so that concludes this guide on kit bashing a few custom Astra Militarum regiments. With the release of the new kill teams, kit bashing your own regiments and planetary defense forces has never been easier. Combine those with Necromunda releases and there are just so many more kits to choose from than there were a few years ago. And that's not to mention the third party components that you can add to them. Hopefully, this video has given you some ideas that you can employ when building your own regiments. And if you have any interesting ideas for some custom regiments I could tackle, leave them down in the comments below. Also, a big thank you to Crumley for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check out bitsofwar.com to pick up some fantastic miniatures and conversion bits. Speaking of thanks, it's time to give a shout out to my Patreon supporters and channel members, the ever generous people who help keep these videos going. Especially my expert tier and above supporters, who are Jonathan Hart, Maciej Savitsky, Morgan, Swedsman, Tim, Daniel Dowling, Immaterial Creations, Joachim Folk, Johans, Jonathan Sandsteed, Mr. Grimm, Pale Juice, and the Googles. And my Sergeant Level channel members, who are Fair Statement, Mr. Jared Hess95, Nerdington Paints, Mark Taylor, Whale Tussler, and Philip Poyer. If you are interested in supporting me too, you can hit the join button below or find a link to my Patreon in the description. Supporters get a whole host of benefits, including ad-free access to my videos, sneak peeks, a private Discord channel, and exclusive merchandise. Speaking of merchandise, I also have a few t-shirts and mugs up for sale featuring designs drawn by me. You can check those out by following the links below or by going over to PeteTheWarGamer.com. So until next time, thanks for watching. And goodbye.